points and pushed his career total to 2002. He's a hooper. And he'll continue to add to that, I guess, because they're also playing in the regionals. At Thursday. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, what do we got? Where are we at? Um, let's Grove. see. The O-R-E-S state championship, uh, Pleasant Grove for Division Two. Both the boys and girls. They got some talent. Yep. There are a lot of stagiaries on that team, too. So. Majority. And all tournament team members, Daily Rice. Is it Kane Humphrey and then the MVP Savannah Switch? Looks like it. Hey, congratulations. Fish Pond Benefit Garage Sale. Oh, let's recap. High school oh, basketball. Sorry, I can't read. <laughs> recap. That's me too. So uh here we go. Where'd you graduate? Huh? Where'd Seminole <laughs> State. <laughs> so yeah, Sasakwa. Let's talk about Sasakwa. The boys will be traveling to Stringtown for regionals. They'll play Thursday at three PM. And the girls We'll be playing that night. Mic check one, there we go. Mic check, mic check. Hey Delaney, you wanna give me a mic check? Testing, one, two, testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Check, mic check, testing, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Mic check Five, one, six, mic check seven, one. Eight. Yep, 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 I think we're good. And we are here in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, ladies and gentlemen, with the Class B Girls Playoffs, where the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats will be facing the Varnum Lady Whippets here in Creek Nation Territory, Creek Nation Reservation in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, at the Muskogee Dome. There I am, I'm Jeremy Fultz. And tonight we will be bringing you this broadcast from the Muskogee Dome here at Creek Nation, or the Muskogee Reservation here in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, where the girls' action starts at 6.30 p.m. tonight. 
just hang with us. We're going through some preliminary checks to make sure everything's working. But as of right now, everything looks like we're good. So uh, we'll see you guys here in a little bit. Mado, Jim and I off these. The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Will you pass me a water? Stongo. And welcome to the Seminole Reservation Sports Network. Jeremy Chaho Chifkados. Delaney Chaho Chifkado. The Jagway Me Yokes of Hungangi. Bokicha the Hiji Yunks. Agadija Geeks. The Jago Emi Yokes of Hungangi. The New Lima Lady Falcons travel to Varnum, Oklahoma and face the Varnum Lady Whippets in this Class B Girls Reservation District Playoffs. Both teams came ready to play. Res playoff basketball was here. And from the jump, New Lima executed the half court offense to perfection, scoring the very first bucket of the game. Barnum would quickly come back and jump on the board and would capitalize on some early New Lima turnovers to jump ahead. Wildcat with the big steal and the easy layup. New Lima returned the favor with a few takeaways and a strong finish to the quarter. And I'm good. At the end of the first quarter, the score was tied at 13-13. Coming out of the timeout, both teams matched. And as Elba Barnum found themselves up, 29 to 22 at halftime. Coming out of the locker room, Barnum looked for the good shot. Delaney? Two team in. Both teams traded baskets. Adam, two team in. New Lima drove to the basket, getting the foul until New Lima made a run and taking momentum going into the fourth quarter. That's Deer. <laughs> Nat Beaver came off the bench, would provide an inside presence to this game. Morgan with his fist to Wildcat. Wildcat with the timely basket. Savannah King with the drive. Barnum begins to pull away. And any last hopes of a comeback was now slim as Deer and Hard would bow out for the ball game. And Barnum would hold on to defeat New Lima 61 to 43 to capture the district title. And there you have it, Oklahoma, where the Lady Whippets defeat the New Lima Lady Falcons. Bringing home that district championship, Delaney. Man, that was a tough game. Man, it sure was. Both teams deserve to win. But it's not over yet. That's right. The Lady Falcons will be playing at Glencoe at 1.30 versus South Coffeyville. And the Lady Whippets will be playing at 6.30 at Glencoe versus Copan. And don't forget, the Vardum Whippets, the boys, they play on Thursday as well at 3.30 against Copan. So, again, from the Seminole Reservation Sports Network, Jeremy Chell Jifkados. Delaney Chell Jifkados. And I'm G.H. Jothlis.
Stone Gold, Seminole Logie, Jeremy Fultz, Chaho Jeff Goodos, and this is not the radio show tonight, <laughs> but we are live from the Creek Nation Reservation or the Muskogee Reservation here in Okmogee and at the Muskogee Dome. I am joined with the co-host tonight, Lenny Pinnock, Chaho Jeff Goodos. Yeah, Bokichida, Wikira, Oivia, Saja Faskidos. And so, Mojinita, Hadamnita, he knows the Popo Hoyan. Bokichida. Uh huh. Boko Thako. And so, we are live. Hopefully, if you are joining us on this broadcast, everything looks okay, sounds okay. Where we are here to watch the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats take on the Varnum Lady Whippets in this Class B regional regional final yeah. area two. So this is the winner. Of this goes to state, or no, they go to area, area finals. Area, area finals. finals play next Friday. And Blue then the, the game right before this one, we witnessed the Earlsboro Wildcats. Beat Midway. Midway, yeah. And I Overtime, think that, I believe. Yep, and that ends Midway's journey in this playoff. So the Earlsboro Wildcats advance the area. And so just bear bear with us tonight. We have some things from the OSSAA that we need to get out, but Other than that, hang on one second. You might get to see Mr. Delaney Pinnock and myself. It's Stone Gold. <laughs> we are live here from Okmogee, Oklahoma, here at in the Muskogee Creek Nation Reservation, home of, I, I think there's some pretty notable people from the Creek Nation Res, Delaney. I'm part Creek also. So, now. <laughs> so there's this guy named Jeremy Fultz. He's from the Creek Nation <laughs> Reservation. But the game will start roughly about 6.30 tonight. Again, where the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats will be facing the Barnum Lady Whoopets. Almost a Seminole County matchup. Close enough, Earlsboro man. just on the other side of the county line. They have a few Seminoles on the team as well. Yep. Some Linas, Streeter, Yahola, Bakers, and Smiths. Hey. Some <laughs> switches. Name, just name them all. <laughs> I don't know if they're all Seminole, but yeah, a few of them. Good deal. Where did my uh, Barnum roster go? Did I use it? <laughs> you put it right on top. You put the ones I can use. Dang. This will be right here. So we will be bringing the, the broadcast live when we uh, come back on the on the air. So Jim Benaya, please.
And on the taking the court, Barnum Lady Whippets. These teams played twice this year. I think Lady Whippets winning both of them. So, Delaney, before we um, left just a second ago, you had mentioned that these two teams that are meeting here in the Class B playoffs have met twice before. What was the outcome of that? Yeah, they're both they're both from the Little River Conference. That's the live stream right there. As a, as I was saying. They're both from Little River Conference, so they meet up each year in the tournament and regular season. I think the Lady Whippets pulled out both wins, but they're both tough games, so there's nothing, no pushovers here. And so with the Varnum Lady Whippets, we're missing some of the players both times, right? And now this one, they actually will have two players, but missing one of their top players, top players of, the, uh, of their team. Yeah, I heard that was the same with Earlsboro as well. They were missing some players. So, different roster. It's a different day here. Yep. And when it comes to the Class B playoffs, you never know. You got to bring your A game. Every day. No matter who's on that roster, you got to bring it. Yeah. So, both these teams, if they lose, they're still both going to the area. They still advance the area. Yep. Still got a chance to state tournament. But it does make their journey a little bit tougher because then they'll have to play from the loser's bracket to get the state. Three games to get the state if you lose tonight. Winner would just have to win one game in area. <laughs> so like when we were in Glencoe, I think it was Glencoe, they were playing some music that we don't want to get in trouble by displaying or playing on YouTube. So when we're not talking, we may go mute. And so that's why we just want to stay within our regulations and within our rules and make sure we do everything the right way. So we're going to go ahead and mute for a little bit. And when we come back, you will join us here in about seven minutes for some Class B girls action where the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats take on the Varnum Lady Whippets in this regional final.
And we are here again in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, on the Creek Nation Reservation, here at the Muskogee Dome to catch some Class B girls playoff action, some regional finals, as the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats will take on the Varnum Lady Whippets. And we hope you're ready. Dome on the ground of the Clark Cox Comedy Place. Welcome all those to the Class B Regional Basketball Tournament. We're getting ready to get things going now. We're going to ask that you would stand to your feet. We're going to start tonight off with prayer. Then we want to honor America by the plan of the National Anthem. Let us pray. Father God, once again, we're thankful for your grace as well and your mercy. We know that you are the ruler and the keeper of this whole troubled world. We ask that you would continue to bless us and let us continue to be free from this pandemic. Now, Lord, we ask that you would just bless the athletes that's going to participate tonight. Let them play to the best of their God-given talent. Most of all, let them have respect for one another. Let them have respect for the coaches as well as the officials, for we ask it in Jesus' name, let us all say, amen. 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 And we'll stay here as they announce the starting lineups for both teams. And if you're just joining us tonight, we are here live from the Creek Nation Reservation in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, where the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats are taking on the Varnum Lady Whippets in this Class B regional final matchup. Here's your starting lineups for the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats. Number four, Anna Lena. Wearing jersey number 15 is Mariana Seguro. Wearing jersey number 23 is Lacey Haynes. And the final starter is wearing jersey number 24. She is Miranda Swift. There you have it, the Lady Wildcat from Harrisburg. Let's give them another hand. Now, basketball fans, let us also welcome the home team, your former Lady Whippet. The Lady Whippet from Barnum, our coach, by head coach, John Mark Anthony, and assisted by Tyler Miller. Here is the starting line for the Lady Whippin' from Farm. Wearing jersey number 23 is Mindy Wildcat. Wearing jersey number 5 is Savannah King. Wearing jersey number 15 is Catherine Morgan. Wearing jersey number 2 is Rihanna. Breaker. And Warren Jersey number 31 is Gabby Cleveland. There you have it. The Lady Whippet from Barnum. Let's give them another hand. 
Tindagiba. Tindagiba. I'll be your geek. Tindagiba. Delaney's kind of pumped up for this matchup tonight. Delaney, can you count how many times you played at Earlsboro? Too many. you played at Varnum? Too many. Too many. Too many. <laughs> and again, if you're just joining us, we are live from Okmogee, Oklahoma, here on the Muskogee Creek Nation Reservation, where the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats are facing the Barnum Lady Whippets in this Class B regional final. Earlsboro gets the rebound, takes the ball the other way. Driving to the lane, loses the ball, but it's going to stay with the Earlsboro. Quick hands by Cleveland. Hey, wow, Lena taking the ball out underneath their own goal. Hey. Top of the key, three-point shot attempt, no good. Rebound Varnum. Varnum getting out and running. Wide open layup. Number 23, Mindy Wildcat with the score. And Barnum comes out with the full court press. Three for Earlsboro, no good. Rebound Barnum, Barnum gets out running again. Number five, Savannah King passes to number two, Reance Breaker, who drains the three. Tuccino! 5-0 run, a lady with it. Quick timeout by the Wildcat. The 6.53 left in this first. Barnum takes a quick 5-0 run. Earlsboro calling the timeout to try to get some feet underneath them right now. I think one thing that we've noticed, Earlsboro's not getting back on defense when they when Barnum gets the ball down here. Allowing Varnum to go up and get some pretty uncontested shots down here on the offensive side. How you doing? Good night. Again, we're live here from Okmogee, Oklahoma. I like saying this part, the Creek Nation Reservation. Well, it's good to be home. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> for you. Erzboro inbounding the ball, number four, Lena with the, the ball. To Kennedy driving. Loses the ball. Both these teams are athletic. Jump shot. Is that guy? Number two, Kennedy for two. Number two, Kennedy. Varnum getting set up in their half court offense. King with a jumper knocks it down. Turnover. Wildcat with the quick hands. Savannah King. Deep three from the top of the key. Ooh. No good. Barnum gets the offensive rebound. Shot goes up. No good. But Barnum getting another offensive rebound. Loses control of the ball. Scramble for the ball. Goes out of bounds. Ball's going to stay with Barnum. We're joined up here by Tony Lena. Who's oh, <laughs> there he is. Barnum looking down low for two, and it's good. Number 31, Cleveland. Gabby Cleveland. Earlsboro going down low. Sequeros. Sequeros. Close to nine. That's about all I can do. Two. 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 
kind of mumbled that name. Ooh, good pass down low to number 31, Gabby Cleveland, unable to convert off the two. Earlsboro bringing the ball down the other way, pushing it for a three-point shot from the corner. Switch. Switch. Number 24. Switch. Makes the score 9-7. to seven. Whip it. 436 left in this first period. Number five. King. Savannah King. Lena bringing the ball up. Good ball movement. Ooh. Out of bounds. Ooh. Switch stepped on that baseline. Back to Turnover. Well, those are going to hurt in this game. With 4-11 left in this ball game, Varnum 11, Earlsboro 7. Pretty good crowd out here at the Muskogee Dome tonight. The ladies. The Sajadis will show up for a basketball uh -huh. game. Varnum getting pressured by this Earlsboro defense. Number two, Rianne Spraker driving down low, loses the ball. Turnover, one-on-one -on -one layup opportunity. Haynes. Haynes Morgan. goes up for the layup, gets fouled. And so that's going to be two shots from the free throw line. First team foul for Varnum. Haynes at the line doing work. Wildcat. Haynes going to the line. First shot up, and it's no good. Second shot up, drains it. Knocks down the second one. Three point ball game. Barnum Whippets 11, Earlsboro Wildcats 8. Earlsboro coming out in a full court pressure defense, gets the ball. Barnum turns that ball over, unable to capitalize though. Ball goes out of bounds, gonna go to Barnum. Looks like a full court man to man defense. Varnum easily breaks it. Mindy Wildcat had a layup but missed the opportunity. Earlsboro bringing the ball back up the court. Got a three by, oh, Spraker with the board, pushes it. Long three. Two Tina. Three Spraker. That's the NBA three right there. Barnum 14, Earlsboro late. 2.52 left in this first period. Good ball movement by Earlsboro, but loses the ball, goes out of bounds. The ball's going to be turned over to Varnum. Number we'll 14, Varnum. number 14 for the Wildcat, Lady Wildcats. Streeter checks in. Let's see if Varnum can capitalize off this turnover. Savannah King driving down to the lane. Cleveland with the jumper, misses. Earlsboro with the rebound. Earlsboro sees that open three corner shot, missed it this time. The Quarles with the What's big it? rebound. Put big back. rebound. <laughs> Earlsboro coming back out in this full court man to man. 14 to 10, Lady Whippets. Cleveland with the high post shot, no good. Rebound Earlsboro. Kennedy pushing the pressure up, passing, dishing down low. Turnover. Varnum gets the ball, slowing it down oh. just a little bit. Errant pass, turnover. Earlsboro, shot goes up, no good, but yeah. is fouled on the play by number two. Spraker. Brianne Spraker. Kennedy going to the line. Or was that on the floor? On the floor, I believe. It was on the floor. 
First foul so, on Spraker. So Earlsboro will be inbounding the ball underneath their own basket once the game resumes. But with a minute 40 left in this first period, the home team, Barnum Lady Whippets, 14. The Earlsboro Lady Wildcats, 10. Delaney, what's your thoughts so far? It's a very intense game up and down the court. A few turnovers by both teams, though. It's going to be a high-scoring game here. I'm trying to set up this PSA. Senior guard Maya Merritt for the Lady Whippets checks in. Earlsboro with the offensive rebound, but Varnum able to get the steal. Morgan pushes the ball up. Kicks it to Merritt. Driving into the lane. Deep three. Deep three by Spraker is off the mark. Rebound by Lena to get the ball. Pressing this offense for Earlsboro. A three shot. No good, but Securo's coming down low. Lady Whippets ball. Gabby Cleveland looks like she might have twisted her ankle up just a little bit. Nat Beaver, Natalie Beaver checks in for the Lady Whippets. Another ball handler on the court. Minute left in this first period. Rian Spraker up for the shot, no good. Rebound by number two, Kennedy. Switch in the fast break here. Gets fouled on the layup. Two free throws. Going to the line for two. Oh, it looks like she's coming up hobbled. Oh, no. Let's see if she can walk that off. She looks like she is. With 40 seconds left in this first period, Barnum 14, Earlsboro 10. 40 seconds left in the first quarter here. Earlsboro. Home of the famous Punjabi restaurant, Delaney, what? right off I-40. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Is it the only restaurant up there? there? Not good. No, they make some uh, pies, too. There's a pie store there in Earlsboro. What else is on I-40? Uh, that store? Your store? Oh, I get that. No, I get that. <laughs> All right. Cleveland with the ball. One-on-one -on -one situation. Rian Spraker had the open lane there, but it got knocked out, and so the ball's turned over back to Earlsboro. Kennedy, or just Kennedy, I think. Kennedy. Trinity Anderson coming Anderson. in for Barnum. Barnum coming out in the pressure D. Twenty-five oh. seconds left, and Earlsboro turns the ball over. Caused by this full court pressure defense by the Lady Whippets. 24 seconds left in this first period. Beaver. Both teams playing a full pressure defense, full court defense. Natalie Beaver bringing the ball up for Varnum. Oh. Low oh. pass causing the turnover. Scramble for the ball. They're letting them play here tonight in the Muskogee Dome. Ooh, big block. Big block. By, and the, the stare Kuros. down. And the stare down. Ball stays with Barnum. Five seconds left in the first quarter. They still got a chance to get a shot up here. We got a sub for the Lady Wildcats. Number 23, Haynes, checks back into the game. Five Savannah seconds Keen. left in this first period. 
Savannah King checks back in for the Whippets, Lady yeah. Whippets. Savannah's going to inbound the ball. I bet she gets the ball back. No. Nope. Oh, good pass. Good look to uh, Natalie Beaver. Natalie Beaver going to the line for two free throws as she was fouled on the shot. So with four seconds left, Varnum goes into the bonus. Oh, I guess they hit the B button in error. So she got no the row. Bonus. She knocks down the first. Not the crowd noise is so much in here, Delaney. I, boy, go. I can't hear you. Long oh, pass for Earlsboro, but blocked by number four, nice Trinity up. Anderson, the sophomore from Barnum coming up big. Man, that's a big play. Big play. Save and in the first there. period, Barnum, Lady Whippets, 15. The Earlsboro Wildcat, Lady Wildcats, 11. <laughs> Big play. Here's a PSA from the OSSAA. What does the 50th anniversary of Title IX mean? It means I'm valued, I'm empowered, I can do anything. It means I'll pave the way for every girl who plays high school sports in the future. Just like every female student, coach, official, and administrator blazed the trail for me. Because every student deserves the opportunity to play. Encourage girls you know to participate in Oklahoma high school sports. This message presented by the OSSAA and the Oklahoma Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. And we're back here at the Muskogee Dome in the Creek Nation Reservation. Lady we're Wildcats. Watching some Class B regional final action. Started the second. Earlsboro gets out, gets the ball. Beaver brings the ball up. Lady Whippers taking their time on offensive end. Turnover by the Whippets. Earlsboro two on two. Good hustle play by number five. Foul on Maya Merritt, I believe. Number two. Oh, I said number five. Number three, Meyer Merritt. Senior guard for Lady Whippets. Lena going to the line to shoot two. They've missed a few That's free three. throws. Yep, three free throws missed by Earlsboro. On this four-point game. That's all it takes. They were taking the ball out for Varnum. Bringing the ball up, running, running the one. Lady Wildcats in the man-to-man -man defense. Passes to her left. Trinity, Trinity Anderson. Savannah King with the ball, trying to go ISO. Passes Natalie, driving into the lane. Loses the ball. Trying to get the ball back. Causing oh. Earlsboro to travel with that ball, so turnover. Mindy Wildcat checking back into the game for the Lady Whippets. Lady Whippets will inbound their ball underneath their own basket. With 6.53 left in this first half. Natalie at the top of the key. Looks down low to Cleveland, who's driving baseline, but rejected by Securos. Another scramble for the ball. Man, it's a tense game here. A lot of deflections. Oh, oh. Beaver turns it over. Good look. Bad pass by Natalie Beaver. Ball goes out of bounds. Turned over to Earlsboro. Lena bringing the ball up for Lady Wildcat. Three-point game, Varnum 15, Earlsboro 12. Turnover. Almost well, a turnover. Varnum Lady defense coming through and knocking the ball out of bounds. The ball's going to stay with Earlsboro. <laughs> J. 
Jordan, I mean Haynes, driving to the lane. The ref counts as part of the yeah, court. He was standing the out of bounds. The ref is part of the court. If the ball hits him, he's out of bounds. Yeah. So Varnum inbounding the ball. Beaver gets it to Cleveland. He gets it back to Beaver. Man-to-man -man defense by the Lady Wildcats. Beaver driving into the lane. Floater, no good. Switch pulling the ball back up front. Lean into Kennedy. Kennedy driving baseline. Ooh, Wild pass out of bounds. These players are making good plays, just not capitalizing on them. With 540 left in this first half, Barnum 15, Earlsboro 12. Wildcat no good for a three. Earlsboro with the rebound, pushing the ball up. Number two, Kennedy kicks the switch. Switch with the shot, Ooh. no good. King Barnum with the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Euro good set. crossover. Oh. Easy bucket for the King five. with the layup. Download the Securos, but blocked by Cleveland. Cleveland with the big block. Man, this game is up and down. Beaver looking low to Cleveland, who puts up the shot. No Ooh, good. Off the mark. Rebound, Earlsboro. Ball gets knocked out of the bounds. Going to stay with Earlsboro. Number 14, Streeter for Lady Wildcats, checks into the game. Ball stays down here for Lady Wildcats. 4.36 left in this first half. Barnum 17, Earlsboro 12. Turnover, another turnover. Yes. Maya Merritt with the steal. Oh. Ooh. Collision at half court. Lady Whippets maintain ball. Natalie Bieber going to inbound the ball. To Merritt back to Bieber. Man-to-man -man defense by the Lady Wildcats. Beaver driving, gets Ooh. fouled on the floor. On the floor. Four fouls for the Whippets, Lady Whippets. Three fouls for Lady Wildcats. Team fouls. Yeah. Mark's over here arguing the call, but oh, we can't. it is on the floor. We're not biased, though. <laughs> Cleveland gets the ball to Beaver. Beaver back to Cleveland. Cleveland. Takes a long high post shot. Beaver. No good. Beaver fighting for the rebound. Keeps Goes the play alive. Yeah. Another possession for the Wh Lady Whippets. King taking Number the ball. Five, yep. To Cleveland at the high post. Good floating Loaded. shot. No good. Beaver, she's in every play, it seems Cleveland like. Cleveland getting her own rebound. Both teams have suffocating defense. Deep three. No good. Tipped out of bounds by Sacrero. Rianne Spraker checks into the game for the Lady Whippets. Wildcat to inbound the ball. Wildcat driving. Savannah King with the long three. No good, but this no hustle or no giving up on the hustle for Varnum keeps the ball down here still. Yeah, they're battling it out. This is about the fourth or fifth straight possession for the Varnum Lady Wildcats. Let's see if they can get a jumper to fall for him on this possession. Oh. 
Barnum moving the ball around. Shot goes up. Savannah King tried to draw the foul. No whistle. Earlsboro pushing the ball up now. Three on two. Shot goes up. Some body contact. No whistle. Beaver pushing play. the ball up for Varnum. Going all the way. Misses the layup. Earlsboro bringing the ball. Crossing half court. Foul on King with the reach. I didn't think they were going to call any fouls this quarter. 250, 249 left in this first half. Varnum 17, Earlsboro 12. Earlsboro taking the ball out from that reach in by King. Some heavy pressure defense by Varnum. Number two, Rance Breaker putting on that D. Late whistle. Quick hands by the Lady Whippets. Foul call. You can hear how the crowd likes that call. Number 14, Streeter, going go to the line for Varnum. Number two on Rianne Spraker. That's a big foul. That hurts. Two shots. That shots will look at with the Hanes. Streeter with the first free throw misses. Streeter has another free throw coming up here. Gets the roll, knocks it down. 17 to 13 with 2.30 left in the second quarter. Beaver gets fouled on the shot and will go to the line for two. Two twenty nine left in this first half. Barnum seventeen, Earlsboro thirteen. Beaver misses the first of her free throws. Morgan checks into the game for Cleveland. Beaver getting ready to shoot the second of her two. Shot up. And it's good. Knocks it down. Five point lead by Varnum. Turnover by Lady Wildcats. Barnum gets the ball again. King bringing the ball up, taking her time here. Wildcat driving the lane. Good dribbling, gets an open layup, and it's good. Nice move. Earlsboro showing some frustration. Full court man-to-man -man defense by the Whippets. Reader with the jumper. Out of bounds off Lady Wildcat. Lady Whippets will get the ball. The hustle plays, Delaney, is where this game is coming down to. That and free throws. I might Breaker have to brings the ball up. To Dairy Queen to get a dip cone after this game. I'll be right behind you. Minute 32 left in this first half. King driving to the hole, puts it up, no good. Earlsboro with the rebound. One on four situation, so they pull the ball back out. Got a minute eight left in the second Leader quarter here. Kennedy, the switch. Turnover, another turnover by Lady Wildcat. They're not even getting a shot, shot attempt up. You know, that's hurting them. Barnum will get another crack at it. Oh, 
Brian Spraker getting pressured, getting the ball across midcourt. Wildcat looking for a, a lane, no good. Calls for a player to get open. Rian Spraker gets the ball. 40 seconds left. Dribbling down into the lane. About throws it away, but Beaver gets the ball. Who drives the lane, loses possession of the ball. Ball Tip. goes out of bounds, but stays with Barnum. With 35 seconds left in this first, Barnum 20, Earlsboro 13. Good pass down low. Natalie Beaver unable to handle, but a deep three. No good. Beaver fighting for the rebound. No good. Earlsboro gets the ball. Earlsboro throws the ball away. Another turnover. Seven-point game with 21 seconds left in this first. Let's see if the Lady Whippets get a good shot here. These turnovers would hurt any team, Delaney. Oh. Wildcat oh. in the back. Oh, good look, but tips Earl's out of is ready. Lena tips the ball out of bounds. That was a good play. Earlsboro inbounding, or Varnum inbounding the ball from underneath their own basket. Deep pass, the Wildcat who brings the ball out midcourt. Looks like they're working it for one shot here with 15 seconds left. Up by seven. Offensive foul oh. by King. Savannah King getting close, I think, to getting that team when she threw that ball. Extended arm there. That's two on King. She can't afford another foul here. Maya Merritt checks into the game. Gabby Cleveland, Trinity Anderson all check into the game here. Ten seconds left. Lady Wildcats with the ball. Nine, eight. I don't think they'll get a Earl's shot out. Streeter with the three. Rims out. No so good. And at the end of your first half. I didn't know if the arena announcer was going to mention it or if I was. All right. Well, Vardom Whippets 20, Earlsboro Lady Wildcats 13. Here's a PSA from the OSSAA. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Oklahoma. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the OSSAA and the Oklahoma Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. And welcome to the Seminole Reservation Sports Network. Jeremy Chaho Chifkados. Delaney Chaho Chifkado. The Jago Emi Yoksa Hamgangi. Bokicha the Hiji Yunks. Agadija Geeks. The Jago Emi Yoksa Hamgangi. The New Lima Lady Falcons travel to Varnum, Oklahoma and face the Varnum Lady Whippets in this Class B Girls Reservation District Playoffs. Both teams came ready to play. Res Playoff Basketball was here. And from the jump, New Lima executed the half-court offense to perfection, scoring the very first bucket of the game. Barnum would quickly come back and jump on the board and would capitalize on some early New Lima turnovers to jump ahead. Wildcat with the big steal and an easy layup. New Lima returned the favor with a few takeaways and a strong finish to the quarter. And I'm good. At the end of the first quarter, the score was tied 13-13. Coming out of the timeout, both teams matched intensity. And as the dust settled, Barnum found themselves up 29-22 at halftime. Coming out of the locker room, Barnum looked for the good shot. Delaney? Two team in. Both teams traded baskets. Adam, two teenage. 
Lima drove to the basket, getting the foul until New Lima made a run and taking momentum going into the fourth quarter. That's Deer. Nat Beaver came off the bench, would provide an inside presence to this game. Morgan with his fifth to Wildcat. Wildcat with the timely basket. Savannah King with the drive. Barnum begins to pull away. And any last hopes of a comeback was now slim as Deer and Harge would bow out for the ball game. And Barnum would hold on to defeat New Lima 61 to 43 to capture the district title. And there you have it from Varnum, Oklahoma, where the Lady Whippets defeat the New Lima Lady Falcons, bringing home that district championship, Delaney. Man, that was a tough game. Man, it sure was. Both teams deserve to win. But it's not over yet. That's right. The Lady Falcons will be playing at Glencoe at 1.30 versus South Coffeyville. And the Lady Whippets will be playing at 6.30 at Glencoe versus Copan. And don't forget the Varnum Whippets, the boys, they play on Thursday as well at 3.30 against Copan. So again, from the Seminole Reservation Sports Network, Jeremy Chell Jifkados. Delaney Chell Jifkados. And I'm G.H. Jothleys. We are the NFHS. That stands for the National Federation of State High School Associations. But really, what we stand for, together with the OSSAA, are the 92,000 high school sports and performing arts students in Oklahoma. And so we stand. We stand for the runners, debate team members, and basketball players. We stand for their coaches, officials, and adjudicators. We stand for the drummers, football players, and actors. We stand for the golfers, singers, and swimmers. We stand as the national leader and advocate for these essential activities and all who participate in them and make them possible. Because it is our purpose to ensure that high school students get to play, perform, and compete together. To learn more about who we are and what we stand for, visit nfhs.org.
Delaney coming in clutch with the minute 35 left in the halftime here. Live from the Muskogee Dome on the Creek Nation Reservation. And we do have some stats real quick. I think the big part of this game, Delaney, is turnovers. Earlsboro girls have seven so far. I don't have the whippets turnovers. Oh, just a. The Varnum whippets also have seven turnovers. So, free throws as well. I think Earlsboro missed more free throws. I'd bet. Yeah, Varnum's fit shooting fifty percent from the, the free throw line. Earlsboro shooting 50% for the oh, free throw man. line. And the score is 20 to 13. So what's the difference here? Just a couple of key layups here and there. I think I think possessions. I don't know if this will have possessions of the game, but we've seen a lot of hustle plays on behalf of Varnum. Yeah. Which kept the ball down on the left side of the court for majority of that first half. Mm -hmm. A lot of offensive rebounds, huh? Yeah, offensive rebounds. Earlsboro had six. Varnum, they had six. Oh, wait, that's it's hard to tell when I'm looking through my phone. Five. So, stats don't lie, Delaney. Yeah, don't Announcers do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do a lot. No, the yoga. We're about to start the second half here. Lady Whippets, first possession of the half. Barnum with possession of the ball. A seven-point lead going into the second half. Pressure Wildcats defense by the Lady ball. Wildcats. It's Breaker driving, or King driving. And able to convert Earlsboro with the rebound. Letting these guys play down there. We need to see Earlsboro take advantage of some of these opportunities where they can get the ball and get the turnover and get a quick bucket. Lena to us baseline, kicks us to Quero's. Negative foul down here. Hadley's not liking that call. Going to the line for two shots, though. The Quarrows, number 15, shooting two free throws. First one's up, and it's good. Nice looking shot, good form. Scores 20 to 14. Knocks down the second one. Earlsboro coming out in this supposed to be a man-to-man -man full court press, but kind of broke down a little bit. King running the offense up top for the Lady Whippets. Savannah King spotting up, passes oh, the ball. Pass. Kind of an underhanded too. pass that her teammate wasn't expecting, went off her shoe and went out of bounds. So. Turnover. Earlsboro gets the ball. Going to bring it up. Varnum waiting at the half court line. Just Haynes. Haynes breaking the defense down. Wildcat with the rebound. Pushes the ball up. Two on one situation. <laughs> she goes up. Looking for a foul, nothing was called. Three on one back here for Earlsboro. Drops the ball down low to Securos, and it's good. Three point game, Earlsboro 17, Barnum 20, with 6.08 left to play in this third period. I think Earlsboro came out doing what they needed to do early in this half. 
getting some transition points off the turnovers by Varnum. Delaney, your thoughts? You got it covered, man. <laughs> got it covered. What's that guy say on dodgeball? Nugget. When the, those two announcers on the Ocho? I, I don't remember that movie. Oh. <laughs> oh. When he's talking to uh, that announcer? Yeah, yeah. I need to rewatch that movie now, I guess. Oh, I know. Three-point ball game here at the Muskogee Dome on the Creek Nation Reservation. Wildcat inbounds the ball for the Whippets. King with the deep three off the mark. Earlsboro rebound. Galena gets past that Barnum trap. Shot up, no good. Rebound by Securos. Takes it up, no good. Ball stays with Earlsboro. A deep three by number 14, Streeter. No good. Foul on Securo. Gabby Cleveland and Securo just banging down low. Man, that's a good matchup right there. Good, good matchup down low there. Cleveland with the jumper. Morgan with the big re offensive rebound, gets blocked. Earlsboro pushing the pace. Ball goes up. Bodies hit the floor. Wildcat with the rebound. Two on one. Kick three the on one. These teams are battling it out down low. Earlsboro getting possession. Pulling it back, trying to set up an offense now. Five minutes left in this third period. Streeter looking down low for Securos. Baldolina gets it down low to Securos. He's getting double teamed down there by Varnum. Kennedy with the jumper missing. Offensive rebound for Earlsboro. Streeter with the jumper. Had an open lane and took advantage of that. 20 to 19, Lady Wizards. Earlsboro has fought their way back into this ball game, one point game. Let's see if Wildcat can get a jump here. She's fouled on the jump shot. Two free throws for Wildcat. Seven point game at halftime. Shoot all the way down to one point right now. 6 0 run by Lady Wildcat, too. You definitely got to give credit to these Earlsboro Lady Wildcats. Beaver and Works checks into the game for the Varnell. Give their teammates a little break. Meanwhile, Wildcat missed the first of her two shots. Missed both of them. Oh, well, that's two don't big see that too free often. throws. Switch driving into the lane. Sekiro's with the rebound. Foul on Sekiro. Again, her and Cleveland going at it down low. This time, ball goes in favor of the Whippets. Haynes, number 23, Haynes checks in for Earlsboro. That's four on Sekiro. That hurts. I didn't know she had that oh, many fouls. Wow. She does have four fouls. Oh, that's big time for. Yeah. That's going to be a big loss for Earlsboro. Not Straight even the fourth quarter yet. Rebound Beaver. by Beaver. Oh. No good. Beaver with the missed jumper, but Cleveland backs her up and gets it off into the board and gets fouled. Two free good. throws for Cleveland here. So that's four fouls on Kennedy for Earlsboro. Earlsboro is going to find themselves in some foul trouble here. Cleveland with the missed free throw. Both teams are missing free throws. Stato Argia. Baker checks in for Lady Wildcats. 
that Lena that goes to the I think that was Kennedy. Kennedy, goes to number two. Cleveland knocks down the second free throw. Oh, turnover. Wildcat with the quick hands forces the turnover. Ball goes out of bounds, going to stay with the ball, or stay with the whippets. Deaver throwing the ball in from the corner. Sets Beaver. up for a three. Ooh, in and out by Beaver. Crowd of one of their rep there, she would have made that. Delaney wanted that to go in. <laughs> Triple team. Switch with the three. Tuchina. Oh. Earlsboro takes the first lead of the game. 22 to 21. Earlsboro's first lead of the ball game. I think you said it, but I couldn't hear you, Delaney. Wildcat. Gabby with the big oh. offensive rebound down low. Barnum gets the lead back. Gets the put back. Barnum 23, Earlsboro 22. Full court pressure here by the Lady Whippets. Yeah, three on two here. Miss layup. Beaver pushing the ball up. Kicks it to work. Spraker with the dish to Cleveland. And she gets the bucket. Extends the lead to 25. 25-22, Lady Whippets. Foul on Cleveland. Drawing that contact, number 24, switch, going to the line. With 2.21 left in this third period. Varnum 25, Earlsboro 22. That was on the floor. Oh, that was on the floor. Yeah. So Earlsboro will be inbounding the ball underneath their own basket. Shot up, no good. Rebound. Beaver, who looks up. Wildcat. Wildcat. Ooh. Tuchina! Wildcat with the big three. Three. Earlsboro calls a timeout. 28 to 22. Lady Whippets. So I think what you're seeing is Varnum's taking advantage with some of Earlsboro's impact players being on the bench through the foul trouble. Varnum's taking advantage of them being on the bench and getting out to a five point lead or six point lead with 202 left in the third period. It was just a one point game and Earlsboro had the lead. That's how intense this game is, back and forth. Don't blink. You're going to miss something. Here's a PSA by the OSSAA. We are the NFHS. That stands for the National Federation of State High School Associations. But really, what we stand for, together with the OSSAA, are the 92,000 high school sports and performing arts students in Oklahoma. And so we stand. We stand for the runners, debate team members, and basketball players. We stand for their coaches, officials, and adjudicators. We stand for the drummers, football players, and actors. We stand for the golfers, singers, and swimmers. We stand as the national leader and advocate for these essential activities and all who participate in them and make them possible. Because it is our purpose to ensure that high school students get to play, perform, and compete together. To learn more about who we are and what we stand With the minute 57 left in this third period, Barnum 28, Earlsboro 22, Earlsboro with the ball. Deep three by switch, no good, goes out of bounds. And so the ball's gonna be in the possession of the Lady Whippets. Natalie Beaver walking the ball up for Varnum. Minute 40 left in this ball game, or in the third period. Loses the ball, ball goes out of bounds, but it's going to stay with the Lady Whippets. I wonder what that Creek Nation hospitality room looks like right about now, Delaney. That's what I've been thinking about. Works with the easy oh. layup. Hits the floor. Work staying with it though and getting the two. Quick play there by number 
24 switch. Kiro Passing the ball off Rianne Spraker's leg. Starters for the Wildcat, Lady Wildcats, the Kiro's and Kennedy checks back into the game. With a minute 24 left in this third. Kennedy looking low, the Securos battle for the ball. Barnum comes up with the loose ball. Wildcat bringing the ball up. Court. Works. Steps into it. Off the mark. Two on three. Pulls the ball back. Lena with the ball up top. Switch looking down low to Kennedy. Securos turns around, no good. Oh. Walt called on. The dribble got a little too high on that one. <laughs> I thought it was tipped there for a second. Lena with the ball up top. Switch driving down the lane. Reverse, Reverse layup. Reverse by Switch. That's good. <laughs> Heck of a play by Switch on that one. Hit the baseline. No one's stopping her. Barnum turns the ball over. <laughs> Pressure from Lady Wildcats. Calls that. Turn Meyer Merritt's. They're past the ball. Is that Meyer or is that Spricker? That was Wildcat that passed the ball there. Works with the fast break. Some contact. Blocking foul. Blocking Two foul. free throws. Number 32, Jessalyn Works going to the line. With 15 seconds left in this third period, Barnum 30, Earlsboro 24. Barnum up by six. Make that seven, Jeremy. I stand corrected. <laughs> All right, we have some subs. Morgan and Merritt checks back in for Barnum. That's Streeter's first foul of the ball game for Earlsboro. Works, knocks down both of them. Ten seconds left in the quarter here. Kennedy getting the ball. Out of a trap. Five, four. Straighter looking to Lena. The Securos puts it up oh. and it's good. <laughs> Big bucket by Securos. Securos valuable down there in the low post. But four fouls though. Yeah, that hurts their aggression. It does. And so that brings the third play quarter action to an end. Where the Varnum Lady Whippets, 32. The Earlsboro Lady Wildcats, 26. Eight minutes left in this ball game. One quarter. Six point game. Let me see if I can get this uh, PSA by the OSSAA. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Oklahoma. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the OSSAA and the Oklahoma Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. And we're back to fourth quarter action. Ooh, jumper by Matt Beaver. And it falls. Another steal by Works. Tipped out of bounds by the Earlsboro. Ball stayed with the Barnum Whippets. Yeah. 
Morgan with the three. Off the mark. The Carrolls with the bucket down low for the Wild, Lady Wildcat. Traveling. Traveling calling Lady Whippets. Earlsboro gets the ball back. Cleveland and King checks back in for the Barnum. And with 639 left in this ball game, Barnum 34, Earlsboro 28. Lena passing the streeter. Big rebound by Morgan, fouled on the play by Swift. Securo is not able to battle down low for the rebound with those four fouls. Makes a big difference. Barnum slowing down the tempo a little bit. King with the... Earlsboro with the rebound, driving into the lane, pulls it back Kennedy, out. Kennedy. Wild pass to Securos, who takes it up, and it's good. Yeah. Ball bounced their way that time. Yeah. We are back to a four-point ball game with 545 left in this game. Big screen by number 15, Catherine Morgan. King with the shot, no good. Rebound, Earlsboro. But there's a scramble for the ball. Oh. My Merritt battling down there with Streeter. Did they call it possession or they call it a jump ball? Jump ball, I believe. Whippets maintain possession. Ball's going to stay with the Lady Whippets. Four-point ball game with 5.30 left. Wildcat checks into the game. Good pass down low. No good. Rebound Earlsboro, but knocked away. Securos. Timeout, Earlsboro. Scramble for the ball. Soon as Securos got possession, Earlsboro coach called timeout. So we're going to stay right here. No commercial break right now with 521 left in this ball game. <laughs> we're going to keep the action right here on the Creek Nation Reservation. Live from the Muskogee Dome for this Class B girls regional final action. Home of the Eagles against Lazer. We got to tip our hat to Creek Nation, too. They, they've they been some really nice hosts for us. So, Mado. Mado. They had a table all nice set up for us, ready to go. That's a pretty nice gym, we're in. It is. The Skogie Dome here in Oak Mulgee. I think this is my first basketball game I've got to see here. Other than photos of, you know, the, the other leagues. Switz, Lena brings the ball nice. up here. Kicks the streeter. Switch with Tutina, knocks oh, it down. Big shot. We have a one point ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Another thriller. Barton 34, Earlsboro 33 with 450 left in this ball game. King, King drives the lane and it's good. Tough bucket, she gets it to go down. 36-33, Varden with the lead. Earlsboro with the ball. Looking down low to Securos. Turn around and it puts it in. Back to a one-point ball game. Shout out Cordell King. We see you. Had the pleasure of calling that young man's games. If, was it last year or a couple years King ago? King with another big bucket here. 
Back to a three-point ball game. Scramble for the ball. Securo gets it, goes up. Cleveland with a foul, hard foul there. Slow getting up. That's been the battle down low between Cleveland oh, and Securos. They gotta be wore out. Still four minutes to play. And Securos with four fouls. Now Cleveland with three. With 409 left in this ball game. Varnum with the three-point lead. And Securo goes to the line shooting two. First one's up. And it's good. Two-point ball game. Earlsboro puts everyone back into the backcourt. Securo must be a good free throw. He has a nice shot. Sinks the second one. One point ball game. Varnum still up by one with 409 left in this ball game. Double. Wildcat didn't get called out. Oh, that could have been. Ball goes to Earlsboro. Here's some Let's see what the crowd. crowd thinks of that call. <laughs> I'll just help him out. Kennedy brings the ball up the court. Driving to the lane. Oh, Throws good. And Earlsboro retakes the lead, 39 to 38 with 3.32 left in this ball game. Varnum with the ball, Wildcat. Dribbling baseline. Looks out to Cleveland who puts it up. It's good. Big shot by Miss Glatt Gabby Cleveland. Man. She's been clutched this game. 40 to 39, Varnum. 319 left in the fourth quarter. Back and back and forth ball game right now, the lady. Yeah. Earlsboro will get the possession out of this timeout. In the action of the our broadcast will stay here throughout this timeout. You can experience the sights and sounds at the Muskogee Dome right here on the Creek Nation Reservation. Earlsboro to take the ball out here. Lena, point guard, bringing the ball up. Now to Kennedy. Switch driving. Securo's with the rebound. Lena now driving. Oh. Big rebound by King, who finds the open streaking Wildcat down the court, who puts it up for a layup. Barton takes a three point lead with 245 left in this ball game. <laughs> Lena slowing the ball down, looking for their post. Switch with the big rebound by Spraker. 303. King with the layup. Takes it all the way. Blocking call. Two free throws for King here. She has to be careful. You don't want a taunting call there. Number 24, Switch. Took a hard hit. He's still down on the floor right now. Looks like might have got the breath knocked out of her. That was a, a lot of contact there. Yeah, she's been playing hard all game. Not a fun feeling when you get the breath knocked out of you mm -hmm. like that. It's hard to catch it. 
Savannah King going to the line. Got to shoot two. King with the big free throw here. Extends the lead to 43 to 39. Switch going to the bench. Is that Haynes checks in for her. Beaver with the big rebound. Throws oh. it up. Mark Williams. Anticipating that contact. Yep. Didn't, didn't, didn't get, get it. Call. Haynes pushes the ball, kicks to Kennedy. Kennedy looking down low to Securos. Strader with the ball here. Kennedy drives baseline. Oh. Slips, slips and is blocked out of bounds. Hard fall by number two, Kennedy. Looks like might have hit a wet spot on the floor. Yeah, feet just gave out from under her. Good to see the players get up from these falls. When your mom yells at you to get up, you get you up. You better get up. <laughs> what they say? She'll give you a reason not to get up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she. Oh. Yeah, with the minute 59 left in this ball game, Barnum 43, oh, yeah. Earlsboro 39, four point game. Heck of a game so far. After this game, Delaney, who's playing? I believe Glen Glencoe and Kenta. Earlsboro inbounding the ball, gets Securos down low. Comes in big for the two. 43-41 with a minute 50 left in this contest. Barnum with the basketball. King with the screen from Beaver. Unable to Turnover. Turns the ball over. Well, Earlsboro maintains the possession, luckily. Ball stays with the Wildcats. Two-point ball game. Securo down low. She gets it and gets the extra and, opportunity. And Humgan. And Humgan. Ties the ball game up. Tied ball game, 43-43 with a minute 33 left. And Securo goes to the line to shoot her and one opportunity. And she misses. But Earlsboro gets the rebound. Kennedy crossover goes off the foot of Natalie Beaver. Ball's going to stay with the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats with a minute 24 left in this contest. Spraker checks back into the game. Cleveland and Securo is going at it, trying to get possession or position down low. Barnum gets the ball back off that turnover. Bossy turnover. Left. Tied ball game, 43-43. Time out before that turnover there. <laughs> With a minute, lot, minute nine left in this contest. Tied ball game. You're... Barnum Lady Whippets 43, your Earlsboro Lady Wildcats 43. It's anybody's ball game. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say he's gonna call up and backdoor alley oop. He's been calling that a few times, so five dollars if he does. To who? I'm not sure to who, but we can't condone we can't condone any sporting activities like that on the radio. <laughs> But if that's true, I will buy your your Dairy Queen dip cone. 
make that a number three and we'll be a good deal. <laughs> no, that's too much. <laughs> too much. Too much for me. All right. And as the music plays here at the Muskogee Dome with the minute nine left in this ball game, 43 to 43 with the minute nine left here on the Muskogee Creek Nation Reservation. It's native basketball at its finest, Delaney. Class B regional finals. I about said, can you dig? Oh, huh? that's right. Our, our Seminole Reservation Sports Network, Jindai Giba. <laughs> I dig eats. Wildcat. There's the back door. I called it. Didn't execute it. One minute left. King driving baseline, puts it up, and it's good. Up two. 45-44, Varnum. Roseboro breaking the press. Streeter going up for a layup, misses it. Big rebound by Wildcat. Varnum finds King. himself in a 2 3 situation. Charge. Big play. She left her feet. Got the charge. Lena bringing the 30 ball second, up. 32 seconds left in this ball game. Barnum up by two. Earlsboro trying to find something to make it happen. Uh -oh. Number 14, Two -two. Streeter. She didn't take it. She kicks the hang. Number 23, Hayes. Ball knocked out of bounds by Natalie Beaver, but uh -oh. the ball's going to stay with Earlsboro. 20 seconds left here. Timeout, Earlsboro. Two-point ball game right here at the Muskogee Dome. Barnum Lady Whippets, 45. The Earlsboro Lady Wildcats, 43. To be specific, 20.18 seconds, the lady. It matters. What's that? It matters. It matters. They're going to come out of this timeout and hit a big three. I can feel it. <laughs> Heck of a ball game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching, please share or comment. Let us know that you're watching. We appreciate y'all's support here on the Seminole Reservation Sports Network. Our new call sign is Jindagiba. A Biogeet Star. We had some streaming streaming troubles in Glencoe, but it seems like everything's working good over here on the res. Creek Nation taking care of everything. Yep. Creek Nation taking taking good care of us over here as Seminole Nation representatives. <laughs> good intertribal relations. So. I would hope so. I appreciate it. But there uh, you go. Get, just Earl with, with the ball. ball. There's that three. I called it. Nope. Kicks it to Sakura. Oh, Tips it. Earlsboro by change. That's a time out. Oh. Time out, Earlsboro. Eight seconds left. Two point ball game. 45 43 with eight seconds left. You know, earlier in the year, the Whippets, Lady Whippets were down with like 10 seconds left. Wildcat comes down, hits a three, takes the lead, and wins. You know, it would only balance things out if. Earlsboro does that this game. Hits the big three. Eight seconds left. It's a long time. Who knows what's going to happen here. Eight seconds is a long time. It's enough time anyways. Some tense fans in this crowd right now. I know. Barring them up by two with 8.46 seconds left in this ball game. Winner advances to area finals. Next Friday, I don't know where, but we'll losers, find out. The losers have to make their way into the area losers bracket, which is a more difficult road. Three games to get the state. But then, you know, the payoff for that, though, is state, which is the next round after area. You say steak? State. Oh, state. I mean, I'm thinking about steak. Yeah, you're thinking Texas Roadhouse <laughs> or something.
you know, overtime right here would be kind of crazy to add on to this game. It's already been a good game, but. And we've seen a few overtime contests here in, the, in this area, or this region, area two. Eight seconds left, Earlsboro inbounding underneath their own basket. Uh -oh. Looking below, Kuro's no He's good, but gets it out to Hayes. He there he goes up, no good. Barnum with the rebound, but it's stolen by Earlsboro. Puts the overtime! <laughs> at the buzzer, the overtime. shot goes in by Sekiro. I called it. We have an overtime situation here at the Muskogee Dome. You gotta hold on to the ball there. If you ain't watching, you better be watching. Sekiro's gets the timely ball, puts it up, and it goes in, and the buzzer goes off, and we have an overtime situation here at the Muskogee Dome. Another four minutes. You are getting your money's worth tonight if you're here at the Muskogee Dome. Or if you're watching online right now. Dribbling the ball there, you know. She just picked it up. I think I'm out of breath. Yeah, you just spitting facts there. Another four minutes. Here we go. This little river showdown, huh? Little river conference. That's where the best ballers come from, I heard. So in the overtime, it's a four-minute quarter. New jump ball. But in this overtime situation, you also got to think, Earlsboro has some, some of their impactful players mm -hmm. in foul Alpha. trouble. All that comes into play here. Whippets get first possession. That starts our overtime position. Spraker with the three, All deep three. three. No good. Off the mark. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not telling your friends about this broadcast, you better do it. There's three minutes, 37 seconds left in this ball game. Between Earlsboro. the Barnum Lady Whippets and the Earlsboro Lady Wildcats. The Carroll's with the big bucket. Mm -hmm. Earlsboro takes the lead, 47-45. Wildcat driving baseline, turns the ball over, and then commits the foul as she comes back in there. That's one that and one. Like a frustration foul. It was one and one also for the Earlsboro. One-on-one -on -one situation for Lena, I believe. She missed it, but Earlsboro maintains possession as it rolls out of bounds. Yeah, he was he was looking for help. Earlsboro up 47 45. 313 left in this ball game. Earlsboro up by two. You get the ball down into Securos. He takes it, drives. No good. Barnum with the rebound. Wildcat. King with the three to take the lead. And hey! Two hey! hey! team. Barnum takes the lead. 48 47. Earlsboro looking oh. for three as well. Ooh. Beaver brings the ball up. Spraker steps into another three. Rolls out. That was a quick shot there. I don't know if Coach Hadley would want that, but. 234 left in this ball game. Barnum 48, Earlsboro 47. Lena bringing the ball up here. Overtime situation. Bo Whitekiller just said best ballers come from Vamusa. Vamusa, they're part of Little River. Looking down low to Securos. Turnover, Wildcat steals it. Wildcat with the ball.
Beaver drives baseline, kicks to Cleveland for the jumper. And it's good. Like right. 50 to 47, Barnum. Minute 45 left. Ooh, Lena. fancy dribbling there by Lena. Lena. With the Dish the Securos and able to handle the ball, went out of bounds, but the ball's going to stay with Earlsboro. Switch checks back in for Earlsboro. They've missed her. Hopefully, she's doing all right. Is this her first time in since she went out due to the injury? Yeah. She comes in. Switch going to spot three. up for a three. Cleveland with the big rebound. Securo's playing with four fouls. Oh, you don't. Timeout, Barnum. She picks the ball up in the corner. What's up, Joe? 50 to 47, oh, Barnum. Minute 23 left. They maintain possession. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hadley with the timeout. Mahaya Juligi, Joe Coon calling me while we're live on the broadcast saying, hey, what are you doing? Hey, he knows we're working. <laughs> <laughs> so with the minute 23 left in this first overtime, Barnum has a three-point lead. Barnum 50, Earlsboro 47. Heck of a ball game so far. What do you think about a second overtime, though? It's possible. It's possible, and I wouldn't mind seeing it. I know the, I know the Barnum wouldn't want that, but yep. having the lead with minute 23 in possession. You know, I think the biggest part of this game is Securo's ability for Earlsboro to stay in this ball game. Yeah. She picked up her fourth foul early in the third period, but then was able to play the rest of the game in foul trouble and not pick it up, but that also allowed – Cleveland down low for Varnum to get possession a little bit easier. Take advantage of it. So with the minute 23 left in this first overtime, Beaver inbounds the ball for Varnum. Cleveland with the ball down on the three-point line. King driving down low, throws the ball, almost throws it away, but Wildcat picks it up. Wildcat, the Beaver with the ball. Barnum holding the ball a little bit. Oh. Beaver going to go to the free throw line for a one and one. 54 seconds left in this first overtime. Justice product stepping to the line here. O R E S. Is that right? Oh, it rings out. Cleveland with the big rebound. Oh, but blocked by Securos. Goes out of bounds. Ball's going to stay with Florida, but Securos still having her presence down low. All right, Whippets taking the ball out. Cleveland gets it at to the top of the key, passes the Beaver. Finds Wildcat down Ooh. low, but the stripped. Lena with the strip. Pushing the ball, 3 on one for Earlsboro. They pull the ball back out. Streeter pulls the ball back out. Hayes with the ball. 30 seconds left in this game. The Carroll has the bucket. Oh, he just blocked. They're, blo hey, they're battling down there. Barnum still with the three point lead. Seconds left. They're trying to foul here, and they do. One and one for Savannah King. 